Hi, this is Dr. Nick from the ECG Academy with Section 3, Chapter 1. Uh, the next lesson here is called Cardiac Tissues and Electricity. We're going to talk about how do heart muscle cells generate electrical activity that we can pick up as the electrocardiogram. So you're looking at these numbers and thinking, what has he got up his sleeve? Um, well, if you've ever worked in a hospital and had to chart on a patient, you'll know that this is a shorthand that we use to, um, to record different uh, concentrations of different electrolytes. And I'm going to come back to this because what I want to do first is uh, talk about the human body. Um, so here's the body. And the, the key here is that the, the human body is made up of organs, um, the heart, the lungs, the kidneys, and so forth. But each organ is made up of tissues, different kinds of tissues. And if you think about tissues in the body, there are, you know, you've got bone and you've got muscle and you've got vascular or connective tissue and you've got uh, nerve cells and so forth. So different tissues kind of have different characteristics. And if we talk about the heart, the heart is an organ, but it's made up of different tissues, the valves and the coronary arteries, which are blood vessels, but the muscle is what we're going to deal with because it's the muscle that generates the electrical activity. Just like um, brain cells can generate electrical signals, all muscle cells generate electrical signals, and we're going to find out how. Uh, now, um, we'll get rid of this, and we'll talk about the, um, the heart muscle. This is, um, the heart muscle is unique. It's different from, from the muscles in our arms and legs, and it's different from the muscle in the walls of our intestine. Um, it's very characteristic. It has these branching uh, um, cells, uh, that uh, under the microscope have some very characteristic parts to them. So uh, let's bring up some labels. A heart muscle cell is referred to as a myocyte, myo meaning muscle and site meaning cell. And the parts of this uh, heart muscle cell or myocyte include this, this dark region here, which is the nucleus. The nucleus contains the DNA and basically runs the cell. Um, through little chemical messengers that come out the nucleus. The, um, the rest of the cell is known as the cytoplasm, and that's where other organelles are in there. And in particular, you've got these very thin lines that run through the cytoplasm. These are known as striations, and these are the special proteins that actually allow the heart muscle cell to contract. After all, muscles have to contract in order to do work. Now, what uh, separates one heart muscle cell from another is this heavy line here, which is referred to as an intercalated disc. And the intercalated discs are like the um, um, thick um, uh, junctions between cells. Think of the cell as not flat, but it's more like a tube. And you've got um, one heart muscle cell joins the other by this disc-like structure, which uh, we'll talk about in later lessons. But the idea is that the signal that uh, the heart uses to contract is passed from one cell to another, to another, to another, like a bucket brigade. All right, so well, let's get back to these numbers. I mean, what are these numbers referring to? Um, the numbers um, actually, uh, the numbers, um, are, this is, um, let me get rid of the labels. This is a, a known as an SMA7 with, in the hospital jargon, um, it's a sort of a shorthand way of writing the um, electrolytes in the body. What are electrolytes? The concentrations of the ions that we find in the blood. If you take a sample of blood and you spin it down with a centrifuge, the cells of the blood settle at the bottom, and then you've got the clear portion of the blood, which we talk about is called plasma, or if uh, you allow the blood to clot to take out the plasma proteins, it's called serum. So the serum... Um, if you throw it into a machine to measure the different uh, ions in the serum, you come up with sodium, which is in the uh, upper left-hand uh, corner of the boxes. Potassium is written down here. This is chloride, and this is um, bicarb or CO2, um, or actually HCO2 minus, okay, if you want to be um, accurate. And this is the blood sugar or glucose. And uh, then you have kidney function here, which is blood urea, nitrogen, and creatinine. Okay, none of those um, are really important, except the point here is that in the serum, you have normally a very high concentration of sodium, uh, which is why blood tastes a little salty. 
I know that sounds gross, but it's true. But look, the concentration of potassium is very, very low relative to the sodium, that is. There's very little potassium in the serum, but lots of concentration of sodium in the, in the serum. Now, when you take a, a, a cell, a cell in the body, any cell, uh, get rid of these numbers and uh, just draw a little cell here. A cell, of course, has a cell membrane around it. You remember this from basic biology. And inside is the cytoplasm. Well, if you sample the cytoplasm in here, you find very large concentrations of potassium and only little concentrations of sodium. It's like reversed with lots of sodium on the outside of the cell and just a little bit of potassium on the inside. Um, and, and so this difference in concentration is what allows the heart muscle cell to generate electrical activity. Because what happens is these ions rush in and out of the cell and the movement of these charged particles um, generates little tiny electrical signals. And we'll talk about the movement of these ions in and out of the cell in the next chapter. Uh, when we talk about the cardiac action potential. Oh, that sounds exciting, like an action adventure movie, huh? Stay tuned.